Hi, I'm Michael and this is California. And we talk a lot about Cover California and the individual health exchanges and they're big programs. They have around eight and a half million Americans who are utilizing the exchanges to get help to pay for their private health insurance. But one program we have not talked about much is the Medicaid program. And Medicaid is a health insurance program for folks with low income. So seniors, children, disabled people, really anyone who has income low enough to qualify. And Medicaid, or Medi-Cal, as it's called here in California, is a massive program. It has 74 million people in 2019, and the number is only going to jump as so many folks become unemployed and lose their health insurance through their work. Now, under the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid was allowed to raise its income requirements, allowing millions of more people to get enrolled into health care that they need. But not all states participated leaving some folks trapped in situations in some states without any health care either through the exchange or through Medicaid. They're essentially stuck in a gap where they are too rich for Medicaid and too poor for the health exchanges. So today we're going to discuss which states have extended their Medicaid programs, which states have not, and what that means for low-income Americans struggling with their health care in the time of the pandemic. Now before we do that, if you like this information, if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So briefly, let's talk about Medicaid. Now, we have a bunch more videos planned for Medicaid that will go much more in depth about eligibility and how to apply for Medicaid and what is Medicaid and all that great stuff. But for the time being, we're just gonna do a brief overview of the program. So the Medicaid program is a safety net health insurance program that is funded in part by the federal government and in part by the states. Although a majority of the funding actually comes from the federal government. It allows folks to get free or very low cost health insurance services based on their household size and their income. And it is full coverage. So the coverage is similar to what you would get through a private health insurance or through your work insurance or maybe even through Medicare. So it covers things like doctor's visits, prescription drug costs, hospitalizations, costs for lab tests, and a whole lot more. And it is the main program that provides health insurance for low income folks across America. And in some states, the income limits are quite generous. And the benefits can be utilized year over year or just temporarily as long as someone stays within the income limits for the program. So under the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, the types of benefit, eligibility requirements, and funding to states were dramatically increased to try to encourage states to expand their Medicaid programs. And at first, the federal government for the first few years would cover nearly 100% of the costs of the expansion. And then after a few years, the ACA would start to reduce the funding from the federal government and expect states to start taking over a little bit more of the cost for the expanded services. And overall, the federal government would still pay around 90% of the cost for the services, and states would only pay around 10% or less of the cost for those services. And aside from improving the health resources and increasing funding for Medicaid, one of the biggest things that the ACA Medicaid expansion did was allow states to move their income requirement from 100% of the federal poverty level, where it traditionally had been, to 138% of the federal poverty level, where the income requirement for the ACA health exchanges coverages began. So for a household of four people in 2020, that would be a difference of around $10,000, from $26,200 up to $36,157 of income a year. Now, effectively, this meant that households could make a lot more money and still be able to get the health care that they need for low cost or free, as well as better services and save the money for other costs of daily living, which would improve their standard of living dramatically. Programs like this seem like a no-brainer for states to participate, especially considering the federal government was going to fund the vast majority of the costs to improve the lives of the poorest households in any states who participated. And as you can imagine, 36 states jumped on the opportunity. So, you know, the usual blue state suspects like California, New York, Colorado, but also some red states like Arizona, Kentucky, Louisiana, and recently even Nebraska. But some of the most conservative states have still not participated in the expansion, which has caused millions of people whose income is above 100% of the federal poverty level, but below 138% of the federal poverty level, to be stuck in limbo. This is because in states that have not expanded Medicaid, in order to qualify for free health care through Medicaid, families and households have to make less than 100% of the federal poverty level. But to get health insurance through the AC exchanges, they'd have to have income above 138% of the federal poverty level. So there is a gap between 100% of the FPL for Medicaid and 138% for health exchange eligibility. This is because the exchanges were designed with the anticipation that states would take the money from the federal government to expand and increase their income eligibility for Medicaid programs from 100% 
to 138 percent. And that would mean that regardless of someone's income, they would either be eligible for Medicaid if their income is below 138 percent of the federal poverty level or Obamacare if they are above. But in states who decided against expanding their benefits, the residents who have incomes between 100% of the FPL and 138% of the FPL are stuck in healthcare purgatory, where they make too much money for Medicaid, but too little money for Obamacare. So there are still 14 states in 2020 who still have this hole in their healthcare system. These states are Wyoming, South Dakota, Wisconsin, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Tennessee, North and South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. And as I mentioned before, recently Nebraska had been on this list, but as of 2020, they have decided to expand their Medicaid benefits starting at the beginning of this year's open enrollment period for the health exchanges, which is in October. Overall, it's apparent that some states faced with the opportunity to improve the lives of the residents for pennies on the dollars, being mostly subsidized by the federal government, have decided to decline for obvious political reasons. But as time goes by and some of the animosity against the ACA fades, we see that some states, like Nebraska, are finally making the right decision to help their residents. Good job, Nebraska. Also, hi to my grandma in Omaha. I love you and I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for watching our videos. And I hope that you found them interesting or helpful or at least useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. We love to see your comments and questions and we'll be happy to make a new video or a new post as soon as we can. Now, finally, we here at California, we know health insurance. So whether it's private health insurance or covered California or Medicare or Medicaid or Medi-Cal, we know health insurance. Because I know it can be very complicated coming out of your work insurance and going on private health insurance. Or maybe you're turning 65 and you're trying to figure out what are the best Medicare options that fit your needs as well as your budget. Or maybe even you're coming out of a government program like Medicaid or Medi-Cal and now you have to get health insurance on the private side. We can help with all of that. So if you have questions about your health care, leave them down below. We'll make a new video or post for that as well. Now, other than that, I'm Michael, and this is California, wishing you a happy, healthy day.